Well, hello everybody and welcome aboard. It's Rob from PMDG back with another tutorial for our Douglas DC-6 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Topic for this episode, the fuel system. It's got eight tanks, a whole bunch of switches and knobs. It's really not that intimidating though once you understand the strategy of how to operate it. I'm going to talk you through that right now. So, let's get started. Fuel management strategy in the DC-6 is really not that difficult. For the most part, what you want to remember is that each engine should have a fuel source. And that fuel source is normally either going to be the main tank or the alternate tank. You've got four main tanks, you've got four alternate tanks. So for the most part, that lines up nice and evenly. Here on the pedestal, you've got four levers, one for each engine, that allows you to tell the engine whether it's pulling from its main tank, its alternate tank, or off, which we'll get to in a minute. You'll notice that each tank has a data tag here to show you how many gallons are located in that tank. You can also find that information off the gauges up above your head in the middle of the eyebrow panel in case you forget. Over here on the right side, you've got two cross-feed levers. These levers work in conjunction with these levers to allow you to cross-feed fuel to an engine if necessary. Looking here at the eyebrow panel, you'll see you've got four gauges for your alternate fuel tanks, and you've got four gauges for your main fuel tanks. Your general fuel consumption strategy is going to be to take off using your main fuel tanks. Then you'll switch and burn the fuel out of your alternate fuel tanks before switching back to your main fuel tanks for the remainder of the flight. I'm going to show you how that's done. Before we get into switching the tanks, let's talk about the boost pumps. This confuses some users. You've got your main boost pumps here, you've got your alternate boost pumps over here. Now your alternate boost pumps are not backups. Your alternate boost pumps are actually pumps located in the alternate fuel tanks. Makes sense when you think about it. Looking down here at the eyebrow panel, you can see we've got main tanks and we've got alternate tanks. So, of course, we've got main fuel pumps and we've got alternate fuel pumps. Just keep that in mind. Don't think of those alternates as backups or you'll get yourself into all kinds of trouble. Now, here's your fuel management strategy for your flying. If you take off with a full load of fuel, once you reach cruise altitude, you're going to want to switch from your main tanks to your alternate tanks. Your main tanks are down here. You'll notice we've burned about 500 pounds from each of them. Your alternate tanks are up here. In order to switch from your mains to your alternates, it's really, really easy. You're just going to take these four levers and move them to the alternate position. That will put all four engines on the alternate fuel source. To do that, we're going to do them one at a time. First we turn the main fuel pump on, then we turn the alternate fuel pump on for tank one. Now we're going to check to make sure we've got fuel pressure going to engine one. We do. We've got fuel flow going to engine one. We do. So we look down at the pedestal and we simply move the fuel selector from the main to the aux position for engine number one. You can tell the aux position because you got that red line there. Now you glance up at the panel, make sure you got fuel flow, then you go up to the overhead, you can turn your boost pumps back off. Once you turn the boost pumps off, you're going to want to look back at the main panel, and this is important. Look back at the main panel and make certain that you still have fuel flow and fuel pressure to engine number one. If you don't, just grab that fuel selector and push it right back to main as fast as you can. All right. Now I'm just going to speed us through doing the same procedure for engines two, three, and four. It's exactly the same. You turn on the two boost pumps. You switch the engine fuel selector lever from main to aux. You turn the boost pumps off, and you go on to the next engine. It's pretty easy. And now you're burning the fuel from the alternate tanks. 
so I've skipped us ahead a couple of hours. You'll notice we've been burning fuel from the alternate fuel tanks and we're just about dry on alternate 1 and on alternate 4. We've got about 100 pounds each in those two tanks. Alternate 2 and alternate 3 are larger tanks. They're located near the wing route. We've still got about 1,300 pounds in each of those tanks, and you can corroborate that by looking at the tablet, and you'll see we've got about 2,600 pounds between alternate 2 and alternate 3. So we're going to point all four engines at those two alternate tanks in order to draw them down. We're going to do it using these crossfeed levers, and then setting our engine fuel selector levers appropriately so that on the left side of the airplane, engine one and engine two will both draw from alternate two. On the right side of the airplane, engines three and engines four will draw from alternate three. That's hard for me to say without con getting confused, so if you're hearing it and you're confused, don't sweat it. I'm going to show you how it works in it will make a lot more sense once you actually see me do it. But again, the strategy is that since the two interior alternate tanks are larger, for this brief period of the flight, we're going to point two engines to the same alternate tank on each wing, draw that alternate tank down, and then we'll switch back to our main tanks. So looking at our alternate tank fuel pumps, turn alternate one on high, alternate 2 on low. I do that because the tank that's going to be losing an engine goes to high, the tank that's going to be gaining goes to low. There's a whole reason for that. We'll talk about some other time. Come down to the pedestal, take the left cross feet, and pull it back one notch so that engines 1 and 2 are in cross feet. What that's going to do is it's going to put engines 1 and 2 on the same fuel source. Now take the engine one fuel selector, pull it back to the off position. So now the cross feed is set up to allow engines one and two to use the same fuel source. You can see it says engine one and two cross feed right here where we've got the lever set. On the left side, the fuel selectors, number one is off, number two is on the alternate tank. So that says that engines one and two taking fuel from the alternate two tank. Confused yet? All right, let's do it again for the other side so you can see how that goes. You'll notice that I'm alternate four on high, alternate three on low. I'm coming down to the main panel to check for fuel pressure and flow, then down to the pedestal. Now, stop and think. We're going to be moving engine three and engine four and the right cross feed this time. So we're going to bring the right cross feed back to the engine three four cross feed position, switch engine four fuel selector to off. That means that engines three and four are going to use the fuel source for engine number three, which is set to alternate three. We come back up here, turn the boost pumps off, and voila! Oops, there we go. Now check for fuel flow and pressure. Everything looks good. At this point, the left two engines are being fed from alternate two, and the right two engines are being fed from alternate three. Makes sense. You're not confused. You got this. All right. If you look over here at your tablet, if you're not really sure you got it right, you can look at your tablet and you'll see the fuel values decrementing. You'll notice that alternates one and four aren't decrementing, but alternates two and three, the fuel level's coming down. So maybe not the most realistic representation since, you know, my tablet on the DC-3 doesn't give me such a luxury, but hey, we're all about luxury here. So use this if you're not sure you got it right. Take a look at that and it'll help you out. Okay, so the last phase in all of this, we've jumped ahead again in time and we've now burned those two aux tanks down to just about nothing. Generally speaking, you want to run a tank down until it's got less than 100 pounds of fuel in it. That's about the time you want to start thinking about switching to another tank. You can see that the alternate two and alternate three are down to about 100 pounds. 
it's time to start moving everybody over to the main tanks, which is where we'll finish the rest of the flight. This is pretty straightforward as well. We're simply going to be moving all of these levers forward to the main tank position, and we're going to close the crossfeed position so that we're no longer crossfeeding fuel. Going back to the main tanks is really straightforward. We want to check and make sure we've got pressure and we've got fuel flow. Then we're going to move up to the overhead panel and we're going to turn the two main tank pumps on low and the one aux tank pump on high. Sorry, I forgot the main two, so we'll put main two on to low. So main one and two are on low. Aux, alternate two is on high. Then we come down to the main panel, we check, make sure we've got pressure and flow. Now, this is pretty easy. We're going to take the engine 1 and engine 2 fuel selectors and we're going to move them both back all the way forward to the main tank position. Then we're going to take the crossfeed switch and move it forward to the off position. So let's start with the engine 1 selector. We're going to move it forward two clicks to the main tank position. The engine 2 goes forward. And then the crossfeed goes forward one click as well. You can see right there. And now it's forward. So now engines one and engines two are back on their main tanks. We can look up here at the main panel, see we've still got fuel pressure and we've still got fuel flow. That's always promising. Come up to the overhead panel. We can turn those three fuel boost pumps off. We'll make a quick check of the main panel to ensure that we still have fuel flow and fuel pressure. And now I'm going to time accelerate us through doing the same thing for the right engines three and four, moving them back forward to their main tanks. And just like that, we're all set. So. Fuel system management on the DC-6 is not all that difficult. Take off on your main tanks. When you reach cruise, burn whatever fuel's left out of your alternate tanks. Sometimes you have to do a second step there to get the fuel out of alternate 2 and alternate 3. Then switch back to your main tanks for the remainder of the flight. Pretty straightforward. Pretty simple. Alright, that's enough for today. Thanks for flying PMDG. Fly safely. Be well, look after one another. We'll see you again real soon.